a very good morning to our speaker dr tanvil gohil and all the participants from dentist channel online today uh, our speaker is a prosthodontist by a uh, profession and the today's topic for the presentation is laboratory procedures in cast partial denture first we'll give i'll give i am dr vidhi katira and i reside in rajkot i am a dentist by profession and presently working as a dentist in a private clinic i completed my bds from bangalore acs mount dental college and mds from narsibhai patel dental college in omr department so first i'll be giving the introduction about dr tanvi very good morning dr tanvi dr tanvi gohil did bds from amc dental college in the year 2015 and completed her post graduation that is mds in department of prosthodontics uh, and crown and bridge uh, in the same college currently she is working as a full time prosthodontist in a private clinic and also she is working as a senior lecturer in goenka dental college gujarat over to you dr tanvi Uh, unable to hear you, Doctor Tanvi. Yes, yes. A little more, little more. Yes. Thank you very much for being present here with today's morning. Uh, your voice is not clear then we it is am i audible now clearly uh little more clarity little more if you can go without uh, earphones also it's fine if you are comfortable am i audible now so a very good morning to one and all listening to the today's seminar the, the topic is the laboratory procedures in cast partial denture so first of all the reason for being uh, for choosing the today's topic is the the significance that the laboratory procedures hold in the constructions of the cast partial denture so i'll make you go through the contents of my today's seminar that are, that is the introduction the significance of the dentist and the laboratory relationships the work authorization forms the laboratory procedures which are the retypoding the master cast marking the height of the contour about the design transfer about the knockout and relief the duplication of the master cast on the the construction of the refractory cast and the wax pattern adaptation on it about screwing the framework Investing the cast about the burnout and best elimination and casting. A little idea about what is uh, about the finishing and polishing of the framework. The few recent advances in the cast partial denture framework constructions that is about the DMLS technique and at last the conclusion and then the references. So beginning with the introduction, then why this topic of laboratory procedures in cast partial dentures has been chosen. So. Uh, Clinician is the one who comes to have the first-hand contact with the patient who is desiring for a cast partial denture. So, uh, Doctor Tanvi, can you knowledge is required by the dentist? Doctor Tanvi, yes. Sorry to interrupt. Can you please share your slides? Yes. Hello. Can you please do your slide share? Share screen with that. I am not. And my screen is not visible right now. No means you are seeing, but I want your PPT to be seen, right? So can you share screen? Uh, see, it's there in the below. Share screen. They come up here, Aiga. You just uh, did ten minutes before, no? The same procedure you do right now. Share your PPT on the screen. Is it? What am I supposed to do? The screen. Share, right? Share screen. 
screen, uh, there will be an option, okay? Done, done, done. Great, great. Fine. Yes. So, is the introduction part visible on the screen? Yes, yes, it's visible. Yes. Good. Fine, fine. So, yes, beginning with the uh, beginning with the today's seminar about the introduction part. So, a clinician is a one who, who comes to have the first hand uh, first hand contact with the patient. So, a thorough knowledge of how the oral cavity looks, what type of design can be given, what are the undercuts present, and what is the actual scenario of the oral cavity is received by the dentist. So, he is the one who will make the, will make the diagnostic impression and will do the necessary and will do the necessary survey, design, drawing of the framework, and then the entire information is being given to the laboratory technician for the construction of the partial frameworks. So here comes the significance of the dentist and the laboratory location. Here, a dental laboratory is a one who is running a business and constructing the frameworks of about a per week, but a proper guidance is required by the clinician, so he constructs the framework which are well acceptable by the patients. If it is illegal, if uh, in today's scenario we see that uh, the dentist becomes solely dependent on the technician for both the design of the framework and its construction, which is actually illegal, we require that we guide the clinicians to prepare a proper design of the framework. As he has no experience in what is going to be considered and he has no uh, first hand to contact with the patient. So here comes the significance of the work authorization form. So a work authorization form is actually a written request which is sent by the clinician to the technician which has all the required information like the work authorization number the date on which it is completed and the date on which the work is requested, the the type of the processes by the use of maxillary arch or the maxillary arch, the proper framework, design of the framework, in which the sample case is to be properly included on the document, the cross case has to be that is the complete combination, the proper design of the nature or the connector. need a voice clarity actually all the participants are messaging that uh, there should be a little bit of more voice quality am i better be audible now yes yes okay great so i'm not using the microphone now yes. so what a so what a dental laboratory person Expects from the dentist is a written work authorization form, a properly surveyed diagnostic cast, and a properly articulated master cast. So, 
The types of the tasks which you will encounter in the today's seminar will be a diagnostic task, a master task, and a refresh task. So, what is a diagnostic task? It is the one which was prepared by the dentist on which the survey was done. The height of the contour was found out. The undesirable undercuts were masked, were marked. The depth of the undercuts were found out. What type of class is to be given? The type of the major connector design all was planned by the dentist. The same was the same diagnostic task with all its information was then sent to the laboratory technician. What he receives is also a master cast sent by the clinician and he prepares a refractory cast. How is this is being done will be seen in the coming slides. So what is the first step done by the laboratory technician is re-tricoding the master cast. So the, so the diagnostic cast which was surveyed and with all its information are now transferred to the master cast from the diagnostic cast. So what he does now is re -tricoding. These are the marks or, brand or lines drawn on the cast in a single thing uh, held perpendicular to the survey rod which helps in assisting and repositioning the cast in the surveyor in a previously defined orientation that is the path of the insertion and the removal of the cast of the framework on the cast should remain same throughout the procedure of the construction of the framework. Hence, re is necessary. As shown in the figures, this is being done with the help of the surveyor by marking the tripod points on the areas of the cast. And after re we mark the height of the contour that are the areas of the highest, greatest circumference on the teeth and this determines the position of the undercuts. Hence, marking the height of the contour is a After the re and marking the heights of the contour, the next step come is a design transfer. That is, whatever design which is being decided by the clinician depending on the situation of the oral cavity is being transferred to the master cast carefully by the technician. Areas of special consideration such as the undercut depths for the retentive plasma are also transferred with the extreme care. The undercut depths are of utmost significance because they are the only, only active part, the only part where the processes is active. Rest or in all other places of the cast, the processes remains passive. So these are the properly drawn, uh, these are the cast with all its uh, in all the information for uh, on it. As for example, it's shown in the figure, the beads, that is the type of the minor connector which will be required. Fin flex means that is a class which is to be placed. The heights of the contour is marked. So the proper information has been transferred in a thorough manner to the master cast. So before proceeding to the next important step, which is block out, the first, the point which is to be taken into consideration is beading. So what is beading? It's creating an irregular surface by means of stipples, dots, speckles on the surface of the cast. It is basically done for the major connector which is to be used. And they, are, they can be done with the help of the uh, end of the downward tube. So they are approximately 0.5 millimeter deep and they ensure why are they significant? So they ensure a positive contact of the major connector with the palatal tissues. They prevent packing of the foot between the major connector and the soft tissues. And they are usually not used in conjunction with the mandibular major connectors. The reason being, they are the mandibular major connectors are usually on the movable tissues or the molar cavity. So such intimate positive contact will un uh, will uh, unrequiredly uh, uh, damage and traumatize the tissues, the soft tissues of the mandibular arch. It can also be done with the help of the end of the spoon. Now, coming to the block out, as I say to you that after the re has been done, the height of contour has been marked, the bleeding has been done, the, the next most important point comes is the block out and then the relief. So, as I use the terminology block out, means it is 
blocking of something which is undesirable. So, what are undesirable parts in the oral cavity in the on the cast are actually the undercuts. So, this undercuts require the elimination. So, blocking is to be done in two ways. That is, most formulas and the blocking technique are done with the help of the certain mixture of the wax, which is a mixture of hard beatness wax, gutta percha, and the colorant to make it separate look visually from the master cast. So this blocker wax is actually kept liquid in the electrically heated pot and it is and it is then placed in the master on the master cast and then carved to the proper position so a proper blocker can be done. So during the stage of the procedure of blockout, a slight excess of the blockout wax is placed in all the undercut areas of the cast. As you can see in the figure, that the cast that on the cast the, the wax is being placed and the uh, and it is being given in the proper position with the help of the with the help of the sharp end of the instrument. There are two. There are three. Uh, types of blockout which you will encounter that is a tapered blockout, blockout then there is a parallel blockout and then there is a shaped blockout so what is actually the parallel blockout so as a name suggests it's parallel so the tooth supported dentures usually require a parallel type of blockout where it is almost about zero degrees so there the path of insertion does not require much changes then comes the tapered blockouts. So tapered blockouts are basically for the tooth and tissue supported dentures. So here the degrees up to which we can do the blockout is ranging from 2 to 6 degrees. Then comes the shaped blockout. It is a procedure of somewhat creating a ledge for, the, for giving a proper shape to the detective terminus of the, uh, of the class. And uh, that is the most important point which is which requires the blockout to give the proper shape of the clasp in that position. So as shown in the figure, the wet sledge on the buccal surface of the molar abutment will be duplicated in the refractive pass for the exit placement of the clasp pattern. And as you can see in the second figure, there is a clasp pattern with the wax uh, which is being shown with the help of the wax pattern. It will be, it will be, then this position will be acquired so that ledge will help to give the proper shape in which the position will be acquired by the metal and the casting procedure. Next are the arbitrary blockout. So, as the name suggests, they can be done arbitrarily, that is, on those areas of the cast that are not directly involved in the framework fabrication, like the land areas, the areas of the attached chinchaiva the areas of the area anterior mandible, so they are done arbitrarily. As shown in the figures, soft wax, clay, mortite are commonly used in such applications and they can be, they do not require that shaped instruments that can be placed manually in the position as shown in the figure. Some arbitrary uh, blockouts may be required in the uh, on some areas like the deep palatal clefts and to the integral surfaces of the two, uh, two eliminate sharp projection on the integral surface of the major connector and they can also be required in the anterior mandible as previously seen. After the blockout, what is uh, the term which we come across next is relief. So why this relief is required in the uh, in the construction of the framework. So there are certain areas in the framework construction where the intimate contact of the framework with the soft tissues of the oral cavity is not required. So there we, we require a spacer between the, between the framework and the soft tissue of the cast which will provide the relief. As you can see in the figure, Two types of the uh, two types of the minor connector designers show. This minor connector design will require uh, the space around the framework, actually beneath the framework and the soft tissue, to be covered with the help of the 
uh, to be acquired by the denture base raising. So, to allow the space for the denture base raising, the, the space is created with the help of the spacer bags and it is termed as relief. The retentive, re, the retentive lattice work must be raised above the edentulous area. As shown in the figure, you will see a thin lattice which is placed on the master cast. This area will be covered by the raising and it is approximately about 1 millimeter thickness. The one major, uh, uh, but the one major uh, advantage also of adding this spacer that is, it will help to create the internal finish line of the framework. So what is the internal finish line of the framework? So it is the finish line of the framework which is coming in intimate contact with the soft tissue. It is, uh, it is desirable that it has, a, it is having a part joint with the framework. So, uh, so it is kept as shown in the figure at the distance of 1.5 millimeters from the abutment. So this margin of the relief wax will help to create a internal finish line of the framework. As a rule, the internal finish line should be placed one millimeter from the, uh, one millimeter distant from the last abutment root. So it will create the finish line. In distal extension processes, the one, as you can see now that the processes, the framework will not have intimate contact with the soft tissue, specifically in the posterior area. So what is required is to create a one, a small two millimeter of the wax is removed from the release, from the release bag, so that at this position specifically, the framework will have the intimate contact with the soft tissue which is a type of the positive stop. Up till now, we have seen about the retripodization, about marking the depth of the undergo, doing various types of blockout, the significance of the relief, the significance of giving the spacer about the internal finish line. So now we have a properly constructed master cast in which all which we wanted up till now in our final cast is being achieved. So what now is required is the duplication, that is creating a duplicate of the master cast. So this is done with the help of the duplicating materials. As you will see in the, as you see in the figure, that this is the final mold which you will get after the duplication process. So how basically this duplication process is done? Usually reversible hydrocolloid materials, say for example agar, are used to create such duplicate molds. As you see in the figure, that this is the typonium flask, which is three, which has its three parts. That is a base, the body, and the reservoir. This is the base, this is the body, and this is the reservoir. So, in this, in this, for this duplication purpose, the flask, the master flask, is then placed on the base of the flask. It is being securely placed. Uh, position and secured it to the base properly. Then comes sealing the base, sealing the outer rim of the flask, placing the body, placing the reservoir on it, preparing the agar agar material in the double boiler. It literally melts at about the 100 degree of the centigrade. The temperature is checked and it is poured into the reservoir at the temperature of 63 degrees centigrade, which is a working temperature for the other other. Now, to allow the cooling process so that the, so that the sol is converted to, so that the gel is converted to sol, we keep the flask under the, in the tray which has the running water. Care is to be taken that the flask, the base of the flask does not get immersed inside the water, otherwise it will imbibe the water. So after the gel has been converted to salt, to, do, to acquire or to get the mold, then we take the base and remove it from the flask. So air can be uh, projected inside to, to uh, 
uh, allow the easy removal of the cast from the mold. And what you get at the end is the proper, properly developed mold in which now you can put the investment material, which is basically the refractory material to produce the refractory cast. And on this refractory cast, the framework will be constructed. So giving a, so revising to you, to, uh, to each and everyone listening, that what all we have done up till now was that we have obtained the diagnostic cast. From that we, after that we came to master cast, the proper design transfer and everything was done on the master cast. Now what we have in our head is a proper duplicate of the master cast so that it can be poured. So refractory cast, so the type of the investment materials which can be used with a refractory cast is dependent upon the type of the alloy which you are using for constructing of the framework. So they can be gypsum bonded, phosphate bonded or ethyl silica bonded investment materials. Uh, here the manufacturer's instructions are to be very properly followed. As per the instructions, the proper way of the powder is done on the beam balance and it is mixed to the as per the manufacturer's instruction then very carefully the investment material is now placed into the mold first of all it is to be kept in layers first of all the teeth are filled and then the entire mold is filled the proper following the proper instructions the material is allowed to set after it has set the agar agar is broken or it can be cut with the help of the surgical plates and then what we get as you see in the third curve, what we get is a final refractory cast it is the cast which will go for the casting procedure to prevent drying of the cast and to, uh, and to, to allow it to get to get its strength it is being placed in the drying oven at uh, at the 93 degree centigrade for about one hour. In order to in order to maintain properly the surface of the cast, so that it can go, it can it can we can do properly the design transfer, and we can allow our framework to, to be properly stitched to it without much damaging the surface. Uh, the and also to eliminate the soaking of the cast in the to eliminate soaking of the cast prior to the investment process we dip the cast in the beeswax dip for about 15 seconds at the temperature of 140 to 150 degrees centigrade so what we now have in the you know, so what you now see in the figure in the in the technician's head is the refractory cast it is the cast which will go for the casting procedure so whatever design which was drawn on the master cast is now transferred to the refractory cast. Care is to be taken that this is done with the minimum pressure so that we do not damage the surface of the refractory cast. After the design transfer, what is now required is to wax the cast. That is, the entire design will be covered by the RPD casting wax so we can now proceed so that after that, after adapting the cast, we can proceed to the casting procedure. The plastic patterns are glued to the refractory cast with a mixture of acetone and plastic pattern scraps to form a tacky liquid. This is basically done to make the casting wax to properly stick to the refractory cast so it does not come out when we are doing the, again, the further procedures. So this is the... Uh, as you all know that these are the commercially available RPD casting wax in various shapes. They can be properly adapted to the cast. The manufacturers provide plastic patterns arranged on the easy release charts. They are to be removed with, uh, with great care and then they are adapted to the cast. How this adaptation is to be done? So the rubber end of the pencil, the rubber of the pencil back end of the pencil as rubber that can be used for adapting. Access can be cut with the help of the surgical blade as we can see and also commercially there are pattern adapters available so in this way what you get at the end is a properly 
adapted G factory cast with the pattern properly attached to it. Now this cast is all set to go for the burnout procedure to eliminate the wax and then the casting procedure. So what is required before the burnout is the screwing. So what is screwing? So what basically is a screw? So it's a channel through which the molten metal flows for the wax. It's a channel through which the eliminated wax comes out and the molten metal flows to, to acquire the uh, to acquire that space on the cast for the construction or to uh, to have the desirable framework. So it's a wax, plastic or metal pattern used to form the channel to allow the molten metal flow to make a casting. So they are available of various sizes. It can be a single screw or it can be a it can be one with a primary screw with a many accessory screws attached to it. So if it's a large framework or the contexts are such that we require that uh, uh, the molten metal should flow into the greater area, then we may require to add the accessory screws. Care should be taken that it must not contain any type of construction to allow the easy flow of the metal also the, the molten metal flowing into it should be without any turbulence so we get a proper casting so now coming to the now coming to the process of the wax elimination that the on the refractory cast the the refractory material before investing and before placing it into the ring is applied in the layer of 3 to 4 mm by the paint on technique as you can see in the figure with the help of the brush utmost care is to be taken that no voids are present so that we do not get such inclusions or exclusions in our final casting so what is seen in the figure now is a is a ring liner which is being filled with the investment material with the with the refractory cast inside it and now this pattern screw from above is ready for the burnout procedure the in, these are the burnout techniques which are commercially available in which the wax elimination done is done and now after wax elimination you can see that the that uh, the uh, invested pattern is being removed from the oven so we can proceed further with the casting procedure the type of the casting procedure which is to be followed is depending upon the type of the alloy which will also decide the temperature of the type of the commercially available machines which we are using. So, uh, for the basically for the cast partial denture, we usually go with the uh, with the, the temp which are the, in the temperature range of around thirteen hundred degrees centigrade. They are of cobalt chromium or nickel cobalt chromium, titanium. So they work in that temperature range. The casting machines can be induction casting or it can be an electronic sensor casting. So how basically this casting procedure is done is there are metal as you can see in the figure. First figure there are metal ingots available which are of the same material of which the casting is to be done. As you can see in the second figure that there are liners, there are possible liners available in which this metal, in, metal ingot are placed that they can now flow in the molten form in the casting machine as shown in the figure. So these are the centrifugal casting machines in which the molten metal will flow and the and through the screws that space in the cast will be taken up by the by the molten metal and what we get and this and what we get at the end is the is a final framework. As you see in the figure, these are the commercially available casting machines. So the casting machines have the capability to resolve to up to 600 RPM and the placement of the alloy ingot into an uncontaminated crucible is of utmost significance. So we do not get such uh, such impurities in our final casting. Um, modern induction casting machines are normally programmed to cast when the alloy has reached the desired temperature. Now what you have is a casting which has been completed with a gentle tap of the mallet, the investment material is broken. 
with the help of the air abrasion as we see in the second figure the small particles of the plaster which is being attached are removed the screw which was attached to the framework is cut down now before rough finish before you are adapting the framework to the before you are adapting the framework to the master cast it is required that the rough finishing and shaping of the framework is been properly done so that the master cast is not damaged because of the framework so before fitting the framework to the master cast the major connector is given its ultimate form rubber wheels and points are used to give the framework a satin finish the casting is adjusted and finished and the finishing and polishing procedure is done by the technician going from the coarser disc to the finer disc these are the figures which are showing various diamonds and wheels for the finishing and the polishing of the framework what you also see is a commercially available kits for the finishing procedure for the finishing high speeds are preferable as compared to the low speed the wheels are point and the speed of their rotation should do the cutting a definite sequence is required and clean polishing wheels are are desired finishing operations completely remove the scratches which are left by the preceding one a type of the polishing which is done at the first is a type of the <coughs> electro polishing procedure so it gives a consistent satin like finish the polishing is done in a bath of 85% phosphoric ortho phosphoric acid at a temperature of 50 to 60 degrees centigrade the anode is attached to the cast and then the current is passed so that the larger metal particles which are rough are removed from the surface of the cast and they go to the electrolytic liquid to give the electro polished surface to the framework now it comes now the framework has reached to the position that we can adapt it to the duplicate of the master cast or the master cast to check its fit on the cast so with the help of these sprays which are commercially available we can find the areas where the framework is getting bind on the cast and then we can check the proper fitting of the framework now after the fitting of the framework is done when we know that no further adjustments or and when we do that we have almost completed all the adjustments required we can do the final wheeling and polishing to give it us to give it a fine finish and the smooth surface uh, so that it is uh, so that the uh, at the foot particles and uh, do not get attached to it the plug does not get accumulated on it and it has a very smooth fine finish now the framework is is ready to be used on the articulated cast so that we can check the proper occlusion that the occlusion rest do not create any hindrance when the patient closes on it so if any fine adjustments which are required either in the framework or in the opposing teeth uh, are uh, or on the teeth on the opposing cast are to be clearly marked and the same is to be conveyed to the laboratory and the same is to be conveyed by the laboratory technician to the clinician so now after completing the procedure up to this one type of class i would like to introduce to you is about the rod wire class they are more adjustable and adaptable they are the class material which can be soldered to the final framework they can be made of the precious or non precious alloys and they can be and they are usually used in the repair in the transitional processes and as repair additions for the fractured class so how this attaching of the rod wire class to the framework is done the best method of attaching is by the soldering it to the latticed work it is to be done well away from the area where where the framework is much flexing or moving the destructive potential of the of the soldering operation will be limited to an area which is to be covered by the denture base resin so these are the commercially available 
electro soldering units this is the commercially available solder material so with the help of the electrode which is driven with the electricity and with the and as you can see in the second figure the framework placed properly on the cast the soldered material is used to join the parts of the broken framework the, the broken framework can also be joined with the help of the laser welding this is done in an argon rich environment and the beam of the electricity of the laser is being projected to join the broken parts coming to the as i said you at the in the introduction part that i will cover a little about the recent advances of the i will cover a little about the recent advances which have come into the market for the cast partial denture framework construction which is the 3d printing technology so what as you all listeners must be aware that this 3d printing technology are basically best based on the computer assisted designing and the computer assisted machining which are the softwares which will do the further steps for the construction of the framework so as you can see in the figure what you see is a final impression made which is which is a conventionally made master which is the conventional master cast you see so the cad cam machine will make the will make its 3d file it will do the digital survey and the digital block out as you see in the figure the red part is showing the digital uh, undercut uh, the undercut area which are found in the red the block out as seen in the second figure and the digital design will make the framework as you can see in the figure and that framework is made with the help of the 3d printing material which will create the framework which is seen as white on the cast which is adapted on the cast and then it can be tried in the patient mouth so how and the another recent advance is the direct metal laser centering also known as direct laser metal centering or metal laser centering so it's an additive manufacturing technique where the technique is like there is a powdered material which is placed on the platform and there is a, the 3d computer assisted machining design which is being obtained by the software this printed part is being sent in the form of the soft copy to the to the uh, to this to this machine there is the powder particles which are as small as 20 micromillimeters in size with the help of the x ray with the help of the laser beam the 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 metal particles are melted and once they are melted as per the design uh, which is been received in the form, in the software this metal will go in its molten molten form and it will cover the design to form the final framework it will it this is a additive technique technique it will create the framework in step by step and the framework which is which is formed is so precise that in one time it creates a framework which is 20 which is only 20 micrometer thick so step by step by step it keeps on creating and hence we get the final framework design so first of all the roller will apply a layer of metal powder then the laser will center the powder according to the file which has received that is the design actually the design of the framework the build platform will get down before applying the new layer of the powder the process will be repeated until the desired part is created and once it is finished the metal part need to be cooled before it is being extracted and this is how we get by the additive technology the final framework so how this uh, recent advances are different from the from the conventional technique which i have explained is they are more precise and they are less time consuming less chances of errors and uh, and uh, bulk like about 90 to 120 units can be constructed in one go is by this by this recent advances so coming to the conclusion of the today's seminar Although the clinician's direct involvement for the construction of the removable partial denture framework is impractical, each dentist should follow the top techniques and processes used in the processes fabrication. The dentist who has a confidence, who is fully confident, who has full knowledge that he can that he can guide the laboratory personnel to its best, is sure to be benefited from the type of the framework which we have created. And these are my references.
thank you so much everyone all the participants for listening giving your valuable time to this lecture and i'm looking forward to your questions Dr. Tanvi, are you done with it? Yes, I'm done. Okay. Uh, participants, any questions? If anyone has any questions, please type in the chat box. Okay, that's good. I guess everyone has uh, understood everything then. Right? Yes. Shruti S. Shankarpal is writing. Thank you so much, Dr. Tanvi. It was amazing. Okay. Okay, now I'll be sharing my screen. Okay. Uh, I'll give everyone some information about Dentist Channel online, okay? Till then, if anyone has any questions in their mind, they can just type in the chat box and Dr. Tanvir will be ready to answer them. Okay. Dr. Tanvi, are you ready to, uh, can you see my presentation? Yes, sir. Okay, fine. Okay, I just want to brief about Dentist Channel Online. This is the first digital dental media, okay, which is, which helps in academics, professional and commercial needs for dental students, practitioners, organizations, businesses, and dental industry leaders. They offer several services and variety of platform under one roof that is Dentist Channel Online. Okay, now what are the services they render? Okay, uh, when you visit the site Dentist Channel Online, okay, there are dental news, there are premium videos, there are webinars, there are courses, the events, uh, the, there is uh, clinic IT services, there is dental business, there are videos, and uh, there is the prime membership for Dentist Channel Online, which I'll be discussing my latest slides. Okay, for uh, the dental organization and dental business, there are the host events, the graphic designing, social media marketing, website development, participation certificates, event registration, consultation services, uh, and the content which you write and design. Okay, so uh, Dentist Channel Online is the online uh, website, okay, where you can register for this Dentist Channel Online, okay, and you can see the webinars and even you can get the uh, certificate for attending the webinars. So they have done 700 plus live dental webinars, 25 plus dental workshops, and 40,000 plus K participants and the certificates issued for that too, 400 plus national and international speakers and 300 plus oral care videos under save the two. So when you go in the website, you can find all these things. Okay, so uh, Dentist Channel Online says they take a pride in sharing the Dentist Channel Online entered into the India Book of Records of having maximum speakers participating in virtual conference in oral implantology. This virtual conference in oral implantology part two was conducted in the month of November, okay, last year, 2020-21. So uh, now when you want to become a prime membership, okay, when you take the prime membership, okay, what are the benefits of that? You will get the regular update and the news about dentistry. You will have the access to uh, the articles, the scientific articles and the recorded webinars. Uh, you can participate as a speaker, okay, publish public awareness videos, 
okay by yourself you can publish the videos over there on the site you get the special discount on the dental courses and uh, you get the certificate okay uh, while uh, participating in the webinar okay you get the personalized account on the dentist channel online with the uh, access to the profile and uh, access to all the webinars which have been organized by dentist channel online okay this will this will be the certificate okay whenever you attend any uh, webinar or when you present any webinar okay so in that case you will get a certificate like this okay so when you become a prime member you get a cde point or ce point for the same if you don't register uh for the webinar okay it means if you don't become a prime member then you just get a certificate but you don't get any cpd cd or ce point okay so it's better to be a prime member okay it's uh, not that costly it's just 800 rupees per year okay so it's better if you join now and you can get an e-certificate along with the cde points Okay, there is a promo code available. <coughs> Sorry. So, as if my name is Vidhi Katira, okay. So, I will write the promo code VK100, okay. And then at that time, you will get the <coughs> discount. For example, Dr. Tanvi wants to do it, okay. So, that uh, she will uh, write the. Uh, if it's uh, sorry it's tanvi sanjay gohil so she has to type tsg 100 and then you can get discount from the uh for the prime membership okay so our upcoming webinars uh, uh, after this uh dr tanvi's okay it will be on periodontal disease and systemic conditions a bi-directional relationship okay which will be conducted on 16 july 2022 uh early uh, in the morning 11 30 uh, in a standard time, okay, and the guest speaker will be Dr. Kulmeet Kaur, and the host will be Dr. Anamika Sharma. After that, the next uh, webinar will be on retention and orthodontics tips and tricks for successful retention. Okay, this will be conducted on 24th July 2022 uh, in the evening, 5 p.m. in the standard time, and the guest speaker will be Dr. Shweta Nagesh, and the host will be Dr. Aparna Pandya. So dentist channel online, okay, it's on Facebook, it's on Twitter, it's on Insta, it's on LinkedIn, it's on YouTube, it's on WhatsApp, okay. So whenever any social media you search, you can search dentist channel online on the following uh, social media, okay. Uh, this is the address, uh, dentist channel online, it's in Bandra, Mumbai, okay. It's the registered uh, corporation identification number and this is the contact number. Whenever you have any query, okay, this is the email ID and the contact number. Any query re regarding this, you can please contact there. Thank you. Okay, so any questions? Yes. Um, okay what is the importance of cd or cpd points okay uh dr tanvi will you be able to answer this what is the use of cpd and cd points okay see cpd and c uh, cd points uh, actually in india they are not that useful okay but whenever you go for uh any uh, foreign courses or whenever you go uh, abroad okay for to study for the dds or something so the cd and cpd points are counted there okay uh in india okay uh mostly it is not that useful people are not that aware okay about this and so there are there is lack of awareness to conduct this webinars and to attend this webinars okay so if you get a cd and cpd points okay i guess it will be more good uh, so that the uh, participants more and more participants will be adding to our webinars okay dr shruti can you know the importance and the use of cd and cpd points okay so I guess there is no other question. So we'll be ending this session now. I'll thank uh, Dr. Tanvi and uh, Sanjay Gohil for presenting such a webinar, uh, which is a uh, very informative and which can be used in our daily practice. Okay, when you do a laboratory procedure for gas pass attention, it's very useful. Okay, where there are undercuts and where there, where you need to do the framework, how you need to frame CPD. And uh, thank you so much, everyone. Thank you all my participants for. Uh, participating in this uh, webinar and i thank the dentist channel online event for conducting such a webinar and imparting knowledge to each and everyone thank you so much have a good day enjoy your day
Dr. Shruti is asking, means in India it is of no use, okay. Uh, no, in India it is of use, okay. But there are some um, areas which are not, which they literally they don't care, okay, of uh, CPD and CD and CE points, okay. But there are some uh, cities, okay, they are literally, they are very careful about the CD and CPD points. So, no, uh, I would say that in India also it must, it, they should make it compulsory, okay, uh, for making, I guess, all areas, all the metropolitan cities, okay. For example, I stay in Rajkot, okay, and I am very much, uh, you know, possessive, you can say, okay, that I should get a CP or a CP or CDE points, okay. So, I uh, here in Rajkot, okay, it's not that big area, okay, it is a good city, okay, but the people are not aware of it. Okay, so they are not concerned about the CDE points or the CE points, okay. Uh, for example, if uh, you take me, okay, I'm very much uh, considering it as an important part in our dental, uh, in our dentistry, okay. So, or the, I use it, okay, I, uh, you see, if, if uh, we have a clinic, okay. So, in clinic, uh, you, I guess you can uh, see that I have got this much CPD points, okay, I have got this much CD points, so that it means that I have attended this webinar, okay, uh, and uh, see, for example, you can say dentist channel online, okay, they just don't give CP, CD and CPD points just like that, okay, when you become a prime member, okay, then only you can get it, and there are many benefits of being a prime member also, so, okay, uh, you can use them uh, whenever you are in a clinic, okay, or whenever you want Want to go in the foreign countries or the abroad then at that time they are very much useful okay any other questions okay uh, should we wind it up okay thank you everyone thank you all the participants okay uh, have a good day bye bye Thank you.